Why does this stupid stuff get to us? There's that one friend that's always late. You know that your roommate is not going to take the trash out. They haven't done it for a year, so why do you get upset when they don't do it? You know that your significant other is going to start snoring as soon as they fall asleep. So why am I trying to control this? And more importantly, why am I getting upset about it? You're wasting time and energy that you need for the things in life that are actually important. You're going to learn that there are five surprising things that you're wasting time and energy on right now. And these are things that you cannot control, but you act as if you can. Everybody does. But after today, you won't. Hey, it's your friend Mel. I am so glad that you're here with me today because we are going to jump into five things that are kind of surprising and they are taking up a lot of your mental and emotional energy. And Ain't nobody got time for that. You know what I'm saying? You need to know how are you going to get your time and energy back? And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we jump into that discussion, I got something so exciting to share with you. It is a gift from me to you. Why am I giving you a gift? Well, because I want to thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this podcast and me and supporting the YouTube channel. Thank you for sharing these episodes with your friends and family and people that you love. You know, the truth is I'm so moved by your support of this podcast and what I'm doing that I am constantly racking my brain, trying to figure out ways that I can take this beyond just you listening and watching. And I just want to do whatever I can to empower you to take risks and to make the changes that will make your life better because you mean the world to me and I want to prove it to you. I know I already show up here twice a week with new podcast episodes and every day on YouTube with a new video, but I want to give you more structured support as a true thank you, which brings me to this exciting gift that I have for you. It's a free two-part video training called Make It Happen. Now, I first announced this training and this gift on last week's podcast, and more than 100,000 of you have already signed up and received this gift and are in the training. And just to be clear, this is zero cost you, which means it's free. All you got to do is go to melrobbins.com slash make it happen. The link is in the show notes. It is right in the YouTube description. You can be in this training and get this gift in less than a minute. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It is a two hour video training and the curriculum is all backed by science and it is designed with a singular mission to support you in taking confident, consistent action in your life, because that's how you make things happen. And the training also comes with a workbook. Now this workbook, I'm holding it in my hand on YouTube so you can see it, it's bright green, it's gorgeous, it's filled with exercises. It is over 25 pages long and it's designed with the latest research to help you take what you're gonna learn in the Make It Happen workshop and apply it to your life. How cool is that? I love doing these free trainings because they change lives. And this one? is gonna change yours. Now, for the 100,000 of you that have already signed up for Make It Happen, I just wanna give you a huge shout out. I'm so thrilled to be your coach and your instructor in this workshop. And I also wanna give a shout out to almost a million of you who took advantage of the training that I created and gave to you at the beginning of the year called Best Year. In my opinion, Make It Happen, this one, it's even better. Why wouldn't you take this opportunity to let me support and coach and teach you so you can make your life better? All you gotta do is go to melrobbins.com slash make it happen and it's yours. And you know how I'm always reminding you that these episodes are free resources that you can share with your friends and your family? Well, so is this training. You're gonna wanna share this because when you're surrounded by friends and family who are taking consistent, confident action and making big things happen, guess what? It helps you make big things happen in your life too. Cool? Awesome. Here's that link again, melrobbins.com slash make it happen. Can't wait to see you in the training. All righty. Now let's talk about those five things that are taking up way too much of your mental and emotional energy. Because here's the thing, when you're trying to control everything, you can't focus on anything that's truly important. And the first thing that I want you to stop wasting mental stress and energy on is the weather. You can't control the weather, but you can control whether or not it bothers you. Let me give you an example. So I live in Southern Vermont and it's April, technically supposed to be spring up here. 
my daffodils and tulips are starting to poke through and come up and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I put our winter coats away. Well, guess what happened a few days ago? I woke up and there was freaking snow outside. Oh, here's the thing. Why would you waste any mental energy on that? Why cause stress? Why get frustrated? You can't control the weather. I mean, it would have been easy for me to pull open the shades and look outside and see my beautiful flower beds all covered with snow, right? And then to start stressing out about whether or not the bulbs are all trashed and, oh my gosh, I spent all those money on those bulbs and now they're not going to buy. But here's the thing. Does stressing about it change anything? No. So why on earth do you and I let it affect us? Now, I know it can feel obvious hearing me say you can't control the weather because you can't. But if it's so obvious, why do we cause ourselves mental distress? Why do we complain about it? Why do we spend time like working ourselves up? You know, I'm thinking right now about how much energy a bride or a groom burns through in an entire year as they think ahead and they worry about what the weather is going to be on their wedding day. Why do that? You can't control it. Once you have your plan A and your plan B, you're all set. So why even think about it? If it rains, it rains. But common sense isn't so common. And the weather does control you. I mean, how many times have you canceled plans or bailed on a run because bad weather has affected you? And I'm not talking about a tsunami that's hitting or a situation that's dangerous. I'm talking about normal, predictable, seasonal weather that you can expect. You've let a light rain shower prevent you from going outside and going on that walk, haven't you? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, the dog can let itself out. I'm not going out in that stuff. Or heaven forbid, when it's super humid, that you leave the air conditioning in your house. You'll cancel plans like that. Unless you work for the Weather Channel, you waste way too much time thinking about it and being impacted by the weather. Here's what I want you to remember. A passing shower isn't going to kill you, so don't let it kill your plans. And it also passes. When there's a cloudy or stormy day, my friend Josh says this all the time, you know what's still up there above those stormy clouds? A bright, beautiful blue sky. Think about that moment on an airplane where you go through the clouds and then you get up above the clouds. What's always up there? A bright blue sky. Bad weather is actually an opportunity. It's an opportunity if you look at it the right way and you don't let it control you for you to practice discipline. In fact, there's a lot of science here that I want to share with you. Did you know that when you do things that you didn't want to do, like going outside for that walk, even though it's raining, the part of your brain that's called the anterior mid-cingulate cortex gets bigger. And when researchers look at this part of your brain, they see it as the seat of willpower. And not just willpower, but the actual will to live. And this is the only part of your brain that grows by doing things that you don't want to do. And so the weather isn't something for you to control, and it's not something that should control what you're doing. The weather is an opportunity for you to grow. So the next time it rains, don't complain. Just do what you planned on doing. Go out on that run, take that hike, go work in the yard, go walk the dog. It's going to help you. It's actually an opportunity to take control of yourself, of your life, of your discipline. And for all you brides and grooms out there who are worried about the weather, the single best wedding that I was ever at was hit with this epic rain and hailstorm that literally came out of nowhere. It was so big of a storm, one of those storms that comes across the Great Lakes in the Midwest, that one of the tents flooded. Literally, the top of it ripped open and waterfalled onto the dance floor. And to this day, Emily Glasser and Billy Sussman's wedding, 30 years later, is the single best wedding I have ever ever been to. The most memorable, the most fun. You want to know why? Not only because of the bride and the groom, but because of the storm. Maybe what your wedding needs is a good old-fashioned rainstorm. And maybe what you need is to learn how to run in the rain because you're bigger than the weather. So stop complaining about it because you can't control it. And that snow, by the way, it's cold 
and tulips actually love cold weather and they bloom longer when it's cold. So there's no reason to complain. I should be celebrating about it because you can control whether or not that weather bothers you or stops you from doing what you need to do. And now that you know that, you're going to not let that happen anymore. So let's move on to the second surprising thing that you're wasting time and energy on. And that is, you cannot control the amount of time that you're forced to wait in line, but you can control what you do with your time while you're waiting. Let's go to an example involving traffic. I want you to think about sitting in your car, you're driving to work, and boom, all of a sudden you hit traffic. You may be sitting in traffic right now as you listen to me. And as you're in traffic, you start to get frustrated, don't you? You kind of grip the wheel and then you hem and you haw and you tense up and you kind of hit the GPS and you oh, I should uh, Why? Why do you do that? By the time that you get to work, you're so exhausted because you worked yourself up. You just burn through so much energy in the car being angry that traffic was backed up and delayed. Did any of that anger and stress help you get to work faster? Of course not. Did it move the traffic? No. Did it free up a lane? No. This is why it's so dumb to allow things that you can't control to impact you. Or let's take another example. You're waiting in line at the post office. You got your arms full of packages that you need to return. It's 2.15. The line is so long. You're out there on your lunch break. You're like, oh, should I stay? Should I not? So now you've committed to staying in line. And all of a sudden, there's somebody at the front and they're taking so long. Do you want insurance with this package, honey? And you're like, oh my God, are you kidding me with this? And you're now starting to get irritated. Do you need some stamps while you're here? Oh my God, are they really going to buy stamps right now? We've all had these moments. Oh, and then all of a sudden you get close and what does the clerk do? Oh, I got to go on my lunch break. Let me get somebody to fill in. And you're like, oh, blah, blah. And these feelings of irritation and frustration, they rise up. Why? Because you feel like you're losing control of your time. You thought this was going to take five minutes. 15 minutes have passed by. I get it. You got somewhere to be. You got to get back to work. You squeeze this in on your lunch break. And now your lunch break is evaporating before your eyes. We've all been there. You can't control when you're going to be forced to wait in line. But you can control what you do with your time while you're waiting. What if you were to look at this not as some sort of slight by society or the post office or traffic. What if you were to look at this as found time instead of lost time? Maybe this is just the universe giving you time back. I mean, let's go back to the traffic example again. You're driving along and all of a sudden things slow way down as everybody merges into a one lane road. And guess what's right in front of you? A truck. Of course. <laughs> And so you're winding and you're going slower. And in that moment, can you control what's happening? No. And there's no use to get yourself all stressed out or cause yourself some sort of distress in your mind or start freaking out about it. And there's this great post that's gone really viral that talks about this exact moment when you get stuck behind a truck on a one lane road and you're forced to slow down. It's a cue to yourself that this truck is sent by a guardian angel. It's slowing you down on purpose to avoid whatever is around the corner or at your destination or maybe somewhere along the way that's not meant for you or that may cause you harm. Do you see how that now puts you into control? So as you slow down, sip your coffee and look at this as an opportunity to be grateful for this time and to practice having patience. And if it's at nighttime and this happens, just imagine that this truck is running point for you lighting up the way. Isn't that a beautiful way to take control? Because you can't control the times where life slows you down, but you can control what you do with that time. And when you look at it like a gift, you take the control back. And there's so many things you could do. You could turn on Rosetta Stone, one of the sponsors of this podcast, and listen to that French lesson that you started, but you haven't had time to finish. Or you could call a friend. This is one of my favorite things to do when I'm driving, hands-free. And just talk to somebody while you're driving behind that guardian angel truck. You could start to see this as not lost time, but time that's been given back to you as an opportunity. You can even do this at the post office. 
So let's go back to the line at the post office. Instead of standing there getting frustrated and flustered, uh, which only makes you feel like you're losing control, it only makes the time go by faster. What if you use this found time and you take a moment to text someone that you've been thinking about just to say hi? You know, one goal of mine this year is to be more closely connected to my family. So I could use that time waiting in line as a sign from the universe that I just gained a moment to reach out to my nephews. They were in a water polo tournament all weekend long, and I want to congratulate them on their wins. How cool is that? Or have an audiobook or a podcast like this one queued up so that you got something that is your go-to in those moments. Because you can't control the time when you're going to be forced to slow down or to wait. But you can control what you do with your time while you're waiting. So make something important happen. That's what you can control. Even if what you make happen in those moments is just practice staying calm or being in the moment or practicing gratitude. And the more that you do that, the more you'll realize how much time and energy you do have at your disposal to use in small and big ways. And you know what else you have in your control? Whether or not it bothers you when I take a quick pause to go to break and give a little air time to our sponsors who bring this podcast to you at zero cost. So don't you go anywhere. I know you want to know these three other things that you can't control. And trust me, the next one is a real doozy. Stay with me. Hey, it's your friend Mel. And I've been thinking it's time that you and I take our relationship to the next level. This may be a little bit forward of me, but I've got a gift that I want to give you. I've been working on this for a little while. It's a brand new free two-part video training that I created for you using principles of physics and neuroscience and all kinds of research to help you go from thinking about what you want to actually making it happen. See, I want you to not only be inspired here on social media, I want you and I to take it to the next level and get off social media and let me coach you and teach you on how you, yes, you can make the next six months of your life the best six months of your life. It's not going to happen by accident. It'll happen on purpose. Homie wants you to do it too. There he is. Hi, you've got a gift for them too? Oh, my gift is better because it's a free training that'll help you change your life. All you got to do is go into the comments and type free, F-R-E-E. -E. I'll DM you a link to the training. That's how easy you can make this training happen. Last time I did this last year, more than half a million people accepted this free gift. I hope this year you'll take our relationship to the next level and let me coach you on making the next six months of your life extraordinary. Let's make it happen together. Welcome back. It's your friend Mel, and we're talking about five surprising things that waste a lot of your time and energy and how to take your control back. And so I now want to talk about the third thing that you cannot control that is taking up a lot of your mental and emotional energy. You cannot control the headlines, but you can control your headspace. Mel, what are you talking about? Well, let me tell you. There's a big difference between being informed about what's going on and getting inundated with things that are beyond your control that stress you out and freak you out. And I'll tell you something. I used to be really stupid when it came to social media because I was passive. And I'm going to explain what that means. Whatever it was that social media or the mass media platform was serving up, I was just taking it in. Oh, yeah, just serve it up to me. Whatever headlines were on the news that was what was filling my headspace. Whatever was dropping into my social media feeds, that was what I was focused on. I'm here to tell you something. Enough with that. It's time to take control. You have to get proactive. Do not be passive about social media. You are handing your attention, which is one of your most precious commodities, away for free as if it's nothing. This is how you waste so much time and cause yourself so much stress. If you don't take control of this, your Instagram feed is going to start looking like the home shopping network. You know what I'm talking about. TikTok will become nothing but celebrity news and influencers. And if you find yourself mindlessly watching 34 hours of television, which based on a recent study is the average amount of time that Americans watch TV per week. And I think I just heard uh, all of you listening in the other 193 countries where this show is syndicated go, oh, Americans. Well, you also spend time mindlessly watching TV and your attention is the single most important commodity that you have. And so I want to inspire you to get super proactive about where you direct it, regardless of how much time you're spending watching TV or wasting it on social media. I mean, those 34 hours could be directed at something that's important. 
something that matters, something that's going to make your life better and something that you want to make happen instead of just mindlessly, passively giving it away. That's time you could use to get your master's. You could use that to launch a side business. You could use that to get serious about healing past trauma or learning how to be happier. Heck, just get to the gym, learn how to cook. Let me ask you something. What's something that you would love to make happen in your life? Are you being proactive about your time and your attention? I mean, just imagine what would happen if you got super proactive about using social media to help you get what you want. This goes so far beyond common sense. In fact, researchers have found that people who use social media passively to browse content from other people are more likely to experience anxiety, depression, and stress. This is from a new study out of the UK that was published in the Journal of Behavior and Information Technology. And the same study found that if you're proactive about social media, meaning you create and share your own content without engaging passively on content with others and doom scrolling all the time, it has a positive impact, especially on your stress levels. It is so easy to make social media or the news outlets the villain in your life. Oh, wah, 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 wah. But that just gives social media and the news all the power. You keep the power because you're in control of how you use these things. And I want you to start using them for good. By getting proactive and figuring out how you can take control of this, it will support you in making important things happen in your own life because it can. So how do you do that? You know, I remember about nine years ago when I was first kind of really getting into the media business, I started following Gary Vaynerchuk. And I'll tell you what, his content was so different than anyone else's because something came alive inside of me. And it became the content that I started engaging with. And it inspired me to start being more proactive about posting more content instead of just sitting there, wasting time, feeling jealous, and just like getting stressed out and, and procrastinating on social media. And so you can choose who you follow. Because remember, you can't control the headlines, but you can control your headspace. And you do that by getting very proactive about who has access to you and who doesn't. And I know you want to do that. Because you made the choice to listen to this podcast, a podcast that can help you create a better life. So do that with your social media accounts. Unfollow accounts that make you feel bad and start following people and accounts proactively that make you feel great about yourself, that inspire you to get proactive and start taking action in your own life. And by the way, whoever you think is spending way too much time on social media or follows a ton of influencers or celebrities or accounts that make them feel bad or you're worried about them, you know, send them this episode. Because if they won't listen to you or they don't really think about it this way, maybe listening to this conversation will inspire them to take their attention and time seriously. It'll help them not only think differently, but act differently in this area of your life. And if you're listening to this right now, because your friend or your mom or your dad or somebody that loves you sent you this episode, I wanna tell you something. You are capable of creating amazing things in your life. Take your time seriously. Guard your attention like a hawk and get proactive. Stop being so damn passive with social media. Get proactive. You're learning about the five things that you can't control that waste your time and energy. And this is a huge one that does. And when you start directing your time and energy to the things that you can control, like how you're using social media, who gets your attention, how you engage with it, holy cow, your stress is going to lower. You're going to get more time back. Your life is going to change. And we're just into the first three. We're going to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors. I'm going to get proactive about this. And while you're listening, take a minute and share this episode to the person who needs to hear it. And when we come back, I'm going to be waiting for you after a break. We've got two more things that we're going to cover. And these are the most important in my opinion, because these are the two most profound, surprising places where you're wasting time and energy and where I want you to learn how to take control. Stay with me. 
let's spring in Vermont. I'm ready to make something happen. Aren't you? Awesome. Let's spring into action because action's the answer. You don't need motivation. You need to know how to make it happen. My free training this year is about execution. I want to teach you the science, the physics, the neuroscience, all the strategies you need to move from thinking about what you need to do to springing into action and making cool stuff happen. It's free, more than half a million people have registered. Do not miss out on this opportunity to let me not only inspire you, but teach you what you need to know so that this is the year that you finally execute on everything that you've been thinking about that you deserve to make happen in your life. All right, melrobbins.com slash make it happen, baby. Boom! Let's do this together. I can't wait for you to see the trainings and to experience the workbook and to see yourself actually doing the things you want to do. Mwah. Welcome back. You and I are talking about the five things that are stealing time and energy from you and how to take control and get your power back so that you can focus your time and energy on what really matters. We're on number four. And here is the fourth thing that you cannot control. You can't control the past, but you can control what you do in the present moment to help you move past it. No amount of regret is going to change the past. So all the time that you spend looking back and beating yourself up, it's just creating unnecessary emotional and mental distress. Yeah, you should look back and learn the lessons that you need to learn. But when it comes to the things that you truly regret, or in my case, ooh, cringe when you think about from your past, the best apology to other people and the most powerful form of forgiveness for yourself is a change in behavior now. When you change, you have proven that you've learned the lesson and you've moved on and you've become a better you. And here's how you can do that. Make a decision today to start living your life in a way that makes you feel proud of yourself because it'll prove that you're no longer that person that you were in the past. Every single moment that you're looking backwards is wasted and it keeps you from moving forward. The only way to move on from the things that you regret is to move forward. That's how I did it. I mean, there are entire decades that I regret about my life. If you listen to the episode about the <laughs> lessons from my 20s, you heard about a lot of those regrets. But I'm really proud of who I've become and what I'm doing in my present life. That's why I don't waste any time and energy looking backward at the past. And you can do the same thing. You can use the present moment to free yourself from the regrets you have in the past. Sitting there and thinking about what you did wrong or what you wish you had or hadn't done doesn't do anything but make you feel bad. You can't control the past, but you can control what you do in the present moment to help you move past it. And here's how you're going to do that. First, would you give yourself more credit? Because you're not the same person that you were in the past. I mean, look at you. Heck, look at me for crying out loud. I'm no longer that anxiety-ridden, toxic person that I was in college. Back then, I had no idea what trauma was, that I was affected by it, that I had experienced it. I had no idea that I had ADHD or anxiety. I'd never been to therapy. I didn't even know how much I was actually suffering. I just thought I was completely screwed up. I'm not that person anymore. And you're not the person you used to be either. So stop looking backwards. Look in the mirror. Look at the person you are today. And please give yourself more credit. And the second thing I want you to do is ask yourself this, starting today, what changes do you need to make that would make you really proud of yourself? Maybe you need to get up earlier. Maybe today is the day you quit vaping. Or maybe it's bringing a more positive and optimistic mood to your family or to your roommates or to your colleagues at work. You can control what you do in the present moment and who you become and that's what helps you move past the things that you regret. Changing today proves that you're no longer the person that you used to be. And so starting today, I want you to make the most of your life moving forward. That's how you make big things happen. That's how you create a better future. And the final thing is that you can't control, but it costs you a lot of time and energy. The future. You can't control the future but you will create it by what you do in the present. 
the future hasn't happened yet. So you might as well stop worrying about what's going to happen right now. Stop worrying and stressing and being anxious about your future. It is a complete waste of your time. You need to be worried about what you're doing today. Besides, I can tell you what's going to happen in the future. I can tell you who you're going to be in six months from today based on your habits, your friend group, and the social media that you consume right now. That's how important the present is. See, what you're doing today has a bigger impact on the next six months than any amount of worry or anxiety could ever have. So if you're sitting there worried about your parents dying, like so many of you are, have you called them today? If you're sitting there worried about what you're going to look like on your summer vacation, have you exercised today? You're worried about retiring? Have you even done a budget? Instead of watching other people's YouTube channels, today could be the day you start yours and you make it happen. Instead of wishing the weight would magically fall off by your vacation, today could be the day you make a plan and make it happen. Instead of hoping that you'll get a promotion in the future, today could be the day that you schedule a meeting with your supervisor about what you need to do in order to make that happen in the next six months. See, the next six months are coming whether you do something different or not. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need to worry about your future because your day-to-day -day life already predicts what it's going to look like. So unless you start doing something different today, we already know what's going to happen. So stop worrying, stop feeling anxious, and let's get proactive. Let's define what you want, and then let's make it happen. Let's get started today. And you know what? I'd like to help you do that. I mentioned this at the top, but now let me tell you a little bit more about this brand new free training for you. Because getting started and taking action and being proactive uh, that's what I'm going to teach you to do. That's why I designed this training called Make It Happen, because it is easy to talk about what you want to do. It's hard to actually do it. And nothing in your life is going to change until you start taking action and you make it change. And I have already said this, but it bears repeating. I am so moved by your support of this podcast that I am constantly trying to go beyond just having you listen or watching an experience with me. I really do mean it. I don't want you to waste any more time and energy on these five stupid things. I want to do whatever I can to empower you, to direct your attention and your time and your energy toward things that matter. I want you to take risks and make the changes that make your life better. And I don't care where you're listening to me right now or what you're facing. The fact is you can make amazing things happen. Right now, you're part of a global community of listeners, of people that are doing amazing things. Your fellow listeners are winning Emmys for their work on shows like Bridgerton. They're launching YouTube channels. They're finishing their manuscripts. They're getting their first book published. They're creating life after divorce. They're losing 100 pounds. They're moving across the world and taking that trip and making big risks. And you've heard me say this. If you can define it, you can make it happen if you're willing to work for it. And now you know five things that are beyond your control that are a waste of your time and energy. You want to know what is never a waste of your time and energy? Your own self-improvement, your own goals, your own dreams. And that's why this new two-part training is going to guide you in defining what you want and making it happen. I don't want you to waste your life being passive. Let's get proactive. Don't waste 34 hours a week watching TV. You can invest two hours with me and get started today. And you now know how important today is when it comes to what the next six months of your life look like. Nearly a million of you downloaded the guide that I created to help you make 2024 one of the best years of your life. And if you loved that free training, ho ho, Mel outdid herself for you this time. This one's going to blow you away. Just go to melrobbins.com slash make it happen. It is two hours of brand new premium video content. The curriculum is backed by science and there is a free workbook that is included that's 25 pages long to help you go deeper and make this stick. And it's all there for you. Why wouldn't you take this opportunity to let me, your friend Mel Robbins, help you, support you, coach you, teach you in making something awesome happen?
Because what you do today has a bigger impact on the next six months of your life than any amount of worry or anxiety or beating yourself up ever will. So let's stop that tomfoolery right now and let's get into action. Just go to melrobbins.com slash make it happen. And by the way, will you be generous with that link? Can you share this with absolutely everyone that you know? Because when you surround yourself with other people that are making big things happen, it helps you make big things happen too. And I want that for you. And by the way, I can't wait to see you in the training. And I can't wait to see what you create in your life with this additional support from me and my team. And in case no one else tells you today, let me be the first to tell you that I love you. I believe in you. I believe in your ability to protect your time and your energy, to focus on what you can control, and to do what it takes to make big things happen and create a better life. Now, go do it. And for you on YouTube, I want to tell you, in case no one else tells you today, let me be the first to tell you that I love you and I believe in you and I believe in your ability to create a better life. And now you got this training. So don't you dare not take advantage of this thing. I created this for you. All righty. And one more thing I want to ask you, because this, hopefully I can't control this, but I can control whether or not I asked for it. Would you please subscribe to this channel? Like literally, you can tell I pour my heart and soul into this stuff for you. And you subscribing to this channel, it really helps support the work that we're doing and it helps me bring you free trainings and free videos every single day, a new video. So thank you, thank you, thank you for hitting subscribe. Thank you for jumping into the training and for sharing this with everybody that you know. And I know you're not thinking, okay, Mel, enough. Please tell me what to watch next. You got it. You just learned the five surprising things you can't control how to get time and energy back. And with all that time that you just got back, now that you're no longer kind of freaking out and trying to control things, I want you to keep learning and getting the facts about how you spend your time. And you are going to love this next episode. It's all about time and where your time is going. And, and here's what it's called. This one study will change how you think about your entire life. Check it out.